there, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be taking you on a tour and giving you an update on my Central Florida Zone 9 garden. I also will be taking you into our front yard to share with you our orchard and our food forest along with our pumpkin patch to show you how that is doing as well. Um, towards the end of this video I'll be sharing some of our family videos of our children harvesting some of the pumpkins this fall and some other great information that I'll be sharing with you about some seeds that you guys have been asking for. So I'll give you some information on how you can order all of my homegrown seeds that I have uh, grown here on my property, have harvested, and have been testing here the last few weeks to make sure that they are getting a great germination rate so they can be ready and packaged for sale here soon. So if this is the first time you are joining me on my gardening channel, I do bi-weekly garden tours and updates along with gardening tips and recipes. I've started a gardening for beginners playlist if you guys want to check that out. And if you want to see any of the previous videos and seed packets and seed varieties that I have started in my garden, I'll be dropping in the description below so you can continue to watch how these plants grow. Yesterday we had a pretty decent rain which has kind of trampled some of my lettuce. Um, I do plan on coming in and putting some heavy mulch around our plants. Um, I've just been waiting for the plants to get mature enough to not trample with our mulch and to easily be able to put it around our uh, vegetable plants. So it is about that time. So over here I have started some basil and cilantro which is finally coming in. We've got some bok choy, which is so beautiful. I'm gonna come over here and show you guys this bok choy. I've never grown bok choy, but look at how beautiful it is. It's almost got these purple undertones and green leaves. Here are my cilantro sprigs and basil. Over here I've got some mint and I just planted some thyme. In this garden bed we have lettuce and romaine. I've got a butter crunch that is something we grow every season which I absolutely enjoy. And here is our romaine. In our little tower here we've got some strawberry plants that are starting to take off. And I also have some red romaine down here. I actually just uploaded a video of me harvesting this romaine and making a taco salad recipe. It's actually something that I do almost every day. I come out into our garden, harvest food, and make a lunch, um, use our vegetables and meals for, to feed our family. So if you want to watch any of those videos, they will be a harvest and recipe or inspiration. I'll put those in the description below as well so you can easily find them. In this bed over here, we've got some radishes. I actually have quite a few radishes over on the other side here I'll show you that are ready to harvest. Radishes are super fast growers. So it looks like I, I planted those on September 19th and today is October 20th. So I've already got some radishes that I can actually take into our kitchen and use. We've got some um, container variety carrots. These are actually quick grow carrots. So um, those are doing very well. Over here, I've got some rattlesnake beans. And in my last video, they weren't even coming up yet. So in just two weeks, look at the growth on these plants. I've got some here behind this tower because we've got some electrical boxes here that are just ugly and an eyesore. So hoping those, that those will grow and cover that area. So I'm going to show you some radish. Here we go. Check out this guy. So these are called French breakfast radishes. And I grew them for the first time last year and absolutely love them. They're kind of mild. They're not super spicy as like most radishes would. So the kids will actually pull these out of the ground and eat them. I'll pull another one here for you. This one wasn't quite ready, but you can still eat them small or big. But look at how fun these are. Over here, we've got some 
shooting star eggplants and their flowers are just so beautiful. I've recently had some serious ant problems on this particular area. They've been making homes in my eggplants. Um, I did get it under control pretty good, but you can still see some ants on these plants. I'm trying to treat the ground naturally as possible. I'm using a diatomaceous earth, if I'm saying that correctly, um, on the ground um, and spreading it around, putting it on the piles and putting it in the area where the ants are. Um, what I've been seeing is that my ant piles start moving around the garden. So if you guys have any tips for me to naturally get rid of ants in the garden, that would be very helpful because then I can share with all of our other subscribers. Check this out. That is just beautiful. So we definitely don't want that to become an ant home as some of my others have. I also have some pepper plants here that have been doing really well. I lost a couple there. Over here, our children has recently painted some of our seminal pumpkins. So this weekend we went and harvested some pumpkins and um, that was a little fun project for the kids, showing them that we can use things that were growing in the garden as projects and with not a whole lot of money invested, we just have our paints that we've had for years in our craft room. And that was just a fun family project that we did. Here's some of the succulents that I've started from other succulents from our garden um, or bought at the store. Over here is a fun little project I have and the ants have rebuilt their home behind my boots. Um, but these are some, some more succulent plants that I propagated. I started with two of those and created 50 and I've got them all over the garden. But those are my old garden boots that I could not get rid of. So thought I would uh, make a little project out of those. Here's a fig tree that I propagated from our other fig trees. And it was just too pretty of a plant to put back in our food forest, so I thought I'd keep it up here on the patio until it matured enough to go out there. Here's our herb garden that we keep close to our kitchen area. So I can quickly come out here and take some rosemary, some uh, chives or basil. I'm, I can't keep basil alive, so if you have tips for me on keeping basil alive, because I constantly kill it. What I've found is my basil does really well in the shade. Um, or really, really likes it wet. Um, here is some Cuban oregano that's done really well. We've got a lot of that and have propagated a bunch for our chickens to eat down by our chicken coop, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Over on this area, we used to have nicely put together garden beds. Though I wanted more space to grow food, so I've pulled up all of the flowers that we had except for our rose bushes. And what I'm going to do here, I've purchased some instant gratification plants that were already um, ready to go. So I have some red cabbage, some Brussels sprouts, some collard greens, more cabbage, and more red cabbage. Then I also had some leftover plants that I didn't put in the garden. I didn't have space for them. So I have some broccoli and kale that I'm just kind of going to design a nice space for them here to grow. So as when you walk through our breezeway here, you have gardens on both sides, but they're all edible gardens. So I'm going to take you over here to this garden. This is a little play area where we come out here and we preparing dinner for the family and we can watch the kids play and pick food from the garden. I can also come out here and pull weeds or work in the garden, harvest food while dad is cooking or relaxing and it's just a really really amazing space for our family to enjoy. So over here in this row I have some thousand head kale. Everything is doing really well. Since the last video, I shared um, that I had some kind of animal come in here and pull up some of my onion bulbs. Well, thankfully, a lot of my onion bulbs have come up 
and the animal did not steal as much onion bulbs as I thought it did. So what I did is replanted more onion bulbs in the garden and thank you, thankfully that animal did not come back, um, has not been back. Um, I do want to give you guys some tips on keeping pests and animals out of your garden. That is a video I have on my list to do. I promise I will do it because I know that was my biggest struggle with starting a garden and it's still a struggle for me. So I will be giving you some helpful tips uh, in future videos on what I do and what has worked for me. So all those are doing well. It looks like some of them have been beat down by the rain yesterday. Our carrots are doing good down here. We've got some scarlet horns and some uh, deveiners over here. In this block here, I have started some mammoth sunflowers and Mongolian sunflower seeds. These are seeds that I have harvested from previous sunflowers from my garden. Over in this block here, I have recently planted some Mongolian sunflowers and mammoth sunflowers. But again, if you guys want to know any of the varieties and seed brands and packets that I've used in my garden, the original video, it's actually called the Fall Planting Guide video, will go through all the seeds and plants that I've put in the garden. Over here, I have some Brandywine tomatoes. And if you've never had a Brandywine tomato, they are just so good. They're so delicious. Uh, before I started gardening, I did not even like tomatoes because I'd never had a real tomato. I was just buying store-bought tomatoes and they were always just disgusting to me. But as soon as you can grow your first tomatoes and find out what a real tomato tastes like, you will never stop growing tomatoes. I will grow tomatoes until I am crippled and very old. Um, they are just so wonderful and so enjoyable to have in the garden. Along this fence line here, we have some snow peas and uh, that animal that came into the garden and I thought dug up all my seeds really didn't dig up too many. So we still have some new sprigs coming in, thankfully. Here's our squash and zucchini rows, which have been doing fabulous. And here in the next probably week, I'll be getting some flowers. Cause if you can see down in here, starting to get little buds and I'm pretty sure they're gonna be flowers coming up if you can see so check out all those little buds I can't wait to watch those open and start seeing some fruit on these plants so recently I have sprayed all my plants with BT which take takes care of all of the worms that would come out and just ravage your leaves and your fruit and vegetables so that is something new I've added into my garden and it's been very helpful. I will link the product in the description below so you guys can find it. Um, here's one of my favorite color zinnias of last season. And what I've done is um, I've bought a variety of zinnias with multiple colors. And as the zinnias came up, I kind of took the seeds from my favorite color zinnia and thought that is a color that I really enjoyed and I want more of in my garden next season. So. I have strategically planted the seeds of my favorite zinnia color from last year all over our garden. So I'm really excited about those because we just, I could not get enough of those colors last year into my kitchen. So here are some of my pole beans that are doing just amazing. These guys have really taken off in just a couple of weeks. They're combining all the way up here. I do have some buds starting on them. Look at how pretty those are. So those will start producing here in the next couple of weeks. I also have one over here. And these are some more snow peas. I did want to mention I have blueberries that are wrapped around our entire garden. I think we have about 40 bushes. Recently, I'm not sure why, but we have lost a few of our blueberry plants. But thankfully, I had propagated some of my blueberry plants and had them back in our backyard uh, barn garden. Basically, that's an area where is kind of it's like a little workshop of mine, of my propagation station, extra plants that I have that we don't have enough space for here, and possibly plants that I may sell in the future or use in our food forest. But I have since then put in 
some of those blueberry plants um, that I propagated, thankfully, to make up for the ones that we have lost. And over here we've got some cabbage, and those are doing really well. I popped in a zinnia here to have some color in this garden. And over here I have some cherry tomatoes. And here I have one grape tomato. This is actually one of my neighbor's grape tomatoes. It's an heirloom tomato that she has had in her family for many years. And I grew it the past couple years. She's dropped it off and I've traded her some of my plants and they are just so wonderful. So as you can see, some of my onion bulbs are sprouting over here. This was my first bunch that I planted. And thankfully it looks like all of these guys are popping up. I did put onion bulbs between almost every single plant in my garden. Um, onion bulbs are not only you can use of course in the kitchen um, and harvest them but they look beautiful in the garden and they're so fun to watch grow but they also help repel pests so that is another reason why we have put onions into our garden and next to each plant so over here we have what's called here is some dazzling blue kale that's so pretty they're supposed to be kind of a bluish purple kale so we've got that rose doing really well and over in this row I have just your standard dinosaur kale and if you've never grown dinosaur kale don't make the mistake that I did when someone said oh do you grow dinosaur kale and I said I hate kale I, I don't really like kale but again, I never had fresh kale from the garden. I've always just bought kale in bags. Never tasted good, but fresh kale from the garden is just amazing. If you think about how long it takes for a farmer to harvest their product, then ship it to the stores or ship it to a packer to then distribute it to shores. It's usually like a week to two weeks. So you lose a lot of flavor and nutrition when uh, during that process. So growing your own food is so much better than buying it from the store for a lot of reasons. In this row I used a seed tape um, with beets in them. So here are some of my beets that are just starting to come up. And if you guys want to watch a fun little video of my children and I planting the garden, I will put that link in the description below. It was one of the first videos that we did. It, it highlights the entire garden being planted in three minutes. It's in hyperlapse mode. It's real fun. Um, I enjoyed putting it together. I hope you guys will go back and look at that video. Um, it's super. So before we go out to our food forest and front yard garden, I figured I'd pop in and show you our very messy <laughs> Uh, fairy garden that our kids like to play in. Um, this was just an old sandbox that we literally pulled out of the trash. Yes, we did pull over on the side of the road and pull this out of the trash. But when I see stuff like this, I think, oh, I can put soil in it and our kids can have a little garden. And look at all the fun stuff that they have in here. They have the little Dollar Tree fairy garden items. They have succulents from our garden. They just pick leaves off of some of my succulents and throw them in there and then they grow. Um, so they love doing that. Um, along this area here, I recently put in some loofahs. So those will then climb up this area. I got to show you my loofah harvest. If you have not seen it yet, I will um, be posting some pictures on my Instagram. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, please make sure you are. I upload um, daily photos of food that I'm cooking from the garden, our children playing in the garden, or harvesting things, um, just inspirational things on our garden that I love to share on Instagram and my stories. Over here we have some Swiss chard that I forgot to show you and that's pretty beaten down by the rain. Hopefully as these leaves dry out, I can get some mulch laid on all these plants. In the next video, you guys will see how we have done that. So here is our chicken coop. And I thought I would bring you over here because I do have a little garden in front of my chicken coop, which I recently put in. 
And what I have here, which I had a friend that dropped off this plant to me because she had said that this plant is very healthy for chickens and that you can feed the leaves to them and it will help combat um, different diseases, flu-like diseases, um, E. coli and different things. Um, so it helps build their immune system. So I actually took this plant and um, propagated it into multiple plants. They're super easy to propagate. And so I put this garden bed in front. So I'll just kind of snip a top off every so often, at least once a week, I'll come in here and throw some leaves to our chickens. And if anybody is curious to know more about our chickens, this is our first full year of having chickens and building our coop from um, old scraps. Let me know um, if I get enough good response, I will share um, do's and don'ts and what I wish I would have known before chickens type of video um, and put that together for you guys. So here is a little glimpse of our front yard garden, but what we like to call it is our front yard orchard. We've got some mulberry trees over here that I have started from cuttings. Um, we've got three rows of those. We've got two rows that are open that we want to put in a variety of grapes that would be very tasty. So if you have any grapes that you love, please drop your comments below and tell us what variety of uh, zone nine grapes grow really well. Um, we have some southern home grapes in these two rows. Um, we will eventually be putting grapes in these rows as well. I'm trying to talk my husband out of it right now <laughs> because I'm enjoying growing these pumpkins so much and I can't imagine where I put all these pumpkins because there's they do grow very um, large and they take up a lot of space so I certainly don't want them in my garden. Um, what I've done here is I will let, take down my little vines and wrap them back up so we kind of keep them to where we're not stomping on them. This gives us space to walk through them and check out all of our pumpkins. So <clears throat> these pumpkins have been a lot of upkeep. So recently I've struggled with losing some leaves to some kind of fungus. And recently I have doused my leaves with neem oil to kind of help control that. And when I say douse, I've literally soaked them with neem oil. And then a few days later have come behind and doused them with BT, which will help control the worms. So not only does neem help with different funguses and um, leaf change and coloration from different things, but it also helps with keeping uh, other bugs at bay. Thankfully, they're still producing. So if you notice anything happening in your garden where you're getting the leaf change or you, you've you noticed a lot of bugs on your plants, go down to your local ag extension and ask them, hey, what should I use? Or go to a community guide, uh, a gardening guide and look into what it might be. So you can get it under control because if you can get those few things under control, you can maintain a uh, great garden and still produce. I thought I'd lost, I was losing these plants, but as you can see down at the end and even here, I'm still getting production. And I hope that this continues, even though it doesn't look very pretty, but I hope it continues to produce um, through this season. I planted these in May, and look at how amazing these guys are. I mean, we've got a pantry full, we've been eating a lot of them, and I am testing the seeds right now um, to put for sale here in the next few weeks. So recently I've been putting out some community page posts so if you haven't seen those yet, make sure you check out those. I'm asking questions to see what you guys want to see in next videos. Um, I also will be posting soon of how you can order my seeds. A lot of you have been asking about my seminal pumpkin seeds. I also have sunflowers. Um, we have some Mongolian, um, mammoth, okra seeds, um, some zinnia seeds, and different things that I will be selling. So. Soon I'll be posting there and also letting you know in my next video of how you can purchase those. I mean, look at these guys. They're just continue to produce. And what's so great about these seminal pumpkins is not only they taste well, but they can store to nine, up to nine months in your pantry. I actually started some seeds um, to put in my garden, just a few plants. So. If I did lose these out here this season, I will at least have some producing. 
uh, in the garden as well. Recently I put in some uh, butternut squash out here through these rows. Um, I made the mistake of planting some of them directly into my mulch, which some of the mulch has, has broke down into some nice soil, but some of the mulch in certain areas hasn't. So I have noticed that uh, I'm getting some yellow in some of my leaves and I feel like that may be because the mulch that I planted directly into is stealing a lot of the nitrogen from the plants. So I'm not sure if these guys will survive, but a few of them are still looking good and the animals have not come over here and touched any of them. So I'm very excited about that and watching these guys grow. So here are some of my mulberry trees. As you can see, we've got a few mulberries that are coming in on these. And these have all been propagated from my trees on my property. And if you guys want to know more about propagation, please drop a comment below and let me know what is what interests you and what you want to learn more about so then I know how to um, put my videos in line for um, production. So here are some of our Myers lemons. Look at those guys. I just picked a couple the other day and I cannot wait to get those into my kitchen and start making some Myers lemon tea. Our girls absolutely love them. So those usually are ready to pick in November. Check that guy out. So those are doing really well. We've got about three trees here that are doing well. Some of our citrus have struggled. We did transplant these. Uh, we rescued these from another property. And if you guys want to see the full food forest tour, I will put that in the link below also. But today I'm just highlighting um, some of our fruit trees that are producing right now but um, we did rescue these plants so we know that they will struggle here for the next couple years but they are producing and when we got them we harvested so much food off of them so we, we're going to try them out and see how they do so here are some of our papaya trees that have been doing awesome i started these from seed so they have just been giving a lot of fruit and look at their flowers that they give off. They're so pretty. Here is our Barbados cherry tree that has just been blowing up with fruit this season. Check these guys out. Look at those. Aren't those so pretty? I'm going to go ahead and take some with me. So every day we, as a family, take a ride in our golf cart and just go into our food forest and our garden area. We love to ride trails around our property and forage food, and that's probably one of my favorite things to do with our family is going to check on our animals and our fruit trees in our garden and seeing what's ready to harvest. Look at those beautiful cherries. But these guys have been giving off so much fruit. We definitely need to get out here and harvest them before the birds come after them. Oh wow, look at that one. Oh my word, that's probably the biggest one we've had in a long time. Recently, I have um, taken some clippings from this tree to propagate some more trees for our family to enjoy. These have been just so wonderful. I don't know if you guys can see this bee that has been just buzzing around, but we've, we've uh, had a lot of bees that are loving on this tree and helping all of the fruit produce. Here's one of our guava trees that has some late guavas that are on it. Usually we're picking our guavas through the summer, but we do sometimes. I wanted to show you guys our loquat tree flowers. These have just been all over this tree lately. And soon we'll have a ton of loquats. We do struggle with keeping the squirrels off this tree, but this tree is gonna produce a ton this year. Look at these blooms. Holy cow, I don't think I've ever seen this many blooms on our tree. Okay, Sunday, which pumpkin do you want? I want the that one. That big one? Okay, let's get it. Okay, I'm gonna snip it and you get it, okay? You grab it. Okay, get it. It's ready, go get it. You want me to get it for you? Okay. Compared to my baby one. I got a big one. <laughs> That's a mama one. Is that a mommy pumpkin? 
Let's go find a baby one. Here's a baby one. This one's ready. Wanna get this one? June, you ready? Oh, you already got it. Good job. Let me see you. It's kind of already loose. Yeah. Nice. Right, June's going to harvest her pumpkin. Let me see it. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> let's go see all of our pumpkins. Here, let's see them. Woo!